Now let us come back and do the third trick, which is very important once again in your general organic chemistry, right? So if they ask you a question, what is a compound which shows all the effects of general uh, means all the effects of GOC? What are the different effects? Basically, we have <coughs> hyperconjugation, we have inductive effect, then we have resonance, then we have right right the most important thing mesomeric effect electromeric effect also right so the main important things are hyperconjugation resonance as well as inductive effect so here they've asked you which is a compound which shows all these effects just see the example so let us write the question a compound a compound which shows all the effects okay right so what are the what is the compound let me write one example and explain you so example is suppose i take a compound ch3 ch double bond ch c double bond or ch3 this is the compound how can how will i categorize this just see first as soon as the compound is given to you let's start numbering it one this is from here this is where you need to number it one two three four five yes students yes so if i have to speak first important thing c5 is a carbon which shows hyper conjugation it shows hyper conjugation now what is hyper conjugation as we know hyper conjugation i did a video also here i'll explain you the definition here it is nothing but interaction of electrons in the sigma bond when this is bonded this interaction of electrons in the sigma bond with the adjacent pi bond isn't it interaction of electrons the sigma bond with adjacent empty or partially filled p orbitals okay once again interaction of sigma bond means interaction of the electrons of the sigma bond with the adjacent pi or adjacent partially filled p orbitals is hyperconjugation so c5 carbon shows hyperconjugation let us come back next i have to think about resonance so there is a double bond here basically double bond is here isn't it so c2 carbon is going to show us resonance right resonance done next when i have to come back so resonance is over hyperconjugation is over inductive effect so basically again the c2 carbon only here you have double bond oxygen isn't it so this is where is the double bond oxygen so again c2 carbon where you have double bond oxygen this is where it's going to show in inductive effect so basically inductive effect what is this it's nothing but polarization of sigma bond so what is it it is either to the electron withdrawing group or electron releasing group isn't it once again hyper conjugation is interaction of the sigma electrons in the sigma bond with the adjacent empty or partially filled p orbital that is hyper conjugation which is seen here when it comes to c2 c double bond o resonance isn't it shift yes so this is resonance stabilized means it, it will show resonance because of the presence of double bond and when I have to come with the inductive effect, what is inductive effect? Inductive effect is nothing but polarization of sigma bond due to electron withdrawing a releasing group. Now, basically students here, I'm giving definitions. But if you have to actually know the concept, please go to the inductive effect video where I have shown plus i effect, minus i effect also there. So remember this compound, very important question. The compound which shows all the three effects, hyperconjugation, resonance and inductive effect is this compound. Right. Now let's come back and do the next trick very important gradually i'll be going to the difficulty level right let's come back and do the trick four now let's come back and do the trick four very interesting and very important that's it now so you have to remember this particular trick where to apply suppose this let us understand the concept then use take an example right always remember two things that is let us make divide the page into two what is that when the electronegativity is higher concept when the electronegativity is lower one concept when the electronegativity is higher what will be the type of the bond the bond will be a stronger bond that is the first thing correct because it's a smaller in, it's smaller in size suppose if the electronegativity is lower the bond will be a weaker bond understood done suppose if the bond is stronger what is the type of an acid the acid is a weaker acid because the bond is strong it will not release h plus ions here 
Suppose if the bond is weaker, the easily releases H plus ions and hence it is a stronger acid. This concept you need to remember. So ma'am, where can I use this? Let's start. So remember, electronegativity higher, the acid will be weaker. If the electronegativity is lesser, the acid will be stronger. Let us apply this trick and see. So let me rub this and use this trick. Here basically I have, let us go from left to right in the periodic table. That's one. I'll, I'll take an example starting from top to bottom in a periodic table. This is better students. Top to bottom in a periodic table. That is in a group. So in group 17 are the halogens which are highly electronegative. Correct. What is the first halogen? Fluorine. Let me write in the center. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Now the hydrides of this HF, HCl, HBr and HI. Now when they ask you among HF and HI which is a weak acid and which is a stronger acid remember HF is a weaker acid. HI is a stronger acid. Why? As I said more the electronegativity stronger is the bond. When the bond is stronger it is very difficult to release this H plus and it is a weaker acid. Once again, higher the electronegativity, it is difficult to remove this H plus and release this H plus and hence it is weaker acid. Here, electronegativity is high, it is less. So, the bond is weak. I can easily release this H plus, it is stronger acid. Now, let us draw the structures and see. Right. So, now I have come to an understanding that HF is a weaker acid uh, compared to HI. So when I take HF, let us draw like this and see. Now HF is this molecule, HCl is one more molecule, HBr is one more molecule and HI is one more molecule. Now there is an overlap of one hydrogen and a smaller lobe of fluorine, isn't it? The orbital of fluorine. Now hydrogen is again uh, the same. Chlorine is a little bit bigger than the fluoride ion which I saw. When I take HBr, this is little bit bromide as little bit bigger than the HCl. When I take HI, hydrogen is here. Okay, hydrogen should not become bigger. Hydrogen is smaller atom. Iodine is much bigger compared to this. So, as we go from left to right in the periodic table, or sorry, as we go from top to bottom in the periodic table, the size of the atom as the number of shells increases the size of the atom also increases now here what happened what is the overlap here there is s orbital overlap with how many there is s orbital overlap with two sp3 hybrid orbitals here there is high s orbital overlap with three sp3 orbitals here there is one s orbital with four sp3 orbitals here there is one s orbital with five sp3 orbitals now what is happening here electron density is decreasing when the electron density is decreasing what will happen to the bond strength that also decreases correct when the bond strength decreases what will happen to the bond length it increases so one more clue which i am telling Remember students, so here because of this difference in overlap as the size is increasing, it can easily release this H plus ions, right? So one more trick which I have to study in trick 4, remember, let me summarize this, three important things, electronegativity higher, bond stronger is a bond, stronger bond, when the bond is stronger, what is the type of acid? It is a weak acid. Next, other way around, electronegativity is less. What will happen to the bond? It is a weaker bond. What will happen to the acidity? It is a strong acid. Next thing, as the electron density, as we have seen in the last case, electron density, what will happen to the electron density? Electron density reduces. When electron density reduces, what, what is happening in that case? Bond strength bond strength also reduces during this process what happens when the bond strength reduces the most important concept bond length increases so this is one more trick you have to remember right so this is one this is two this is three that's the reason we always say among this hf is less acidic than H hcl so HF is a weak acid, HCl is a strong acid source.
so hope your concept is clear now so which is a weak acid which is strong acid based on the electronegativity concept i have i tried to explain you all i think it is clear please rewind the video and watch it again right let me come back and meet meet you with the next trick that is trick number 5